Well, good evening, everyone. If I can have everyone to please uh, be seated at your tables so that we can get started. We are all ready to, to start our event tonight, and we can start as soon as everyone is seated.
Good evening and welcome. It is a joy to have each of you with us this evening and to know that you want to be here. Welcome. Welcome to this 20th annual Spes Gregis Benefit Banquet for the Advancement of Priestly Formation here at Holy Trinity Seminary. I'm Father Vincent Anyama, Rector of Holy Trinity Seminary and also an alumnus class of 2004 of Holy Trinity Seminary. We are delighted once again to host this year's Spes Gregis here at Holy Trinity Seminary so that our men can welcome you to their home. I thank you for your presence and in support of this most important work of priestly formation essential to the life of the church, essential for the sacraments and for the sanctification of souls and in service to your families. I thank you for coming tonight to rejoice with us at the work of the Lord in the lives of these fine young men who are courageous in stepping up to respond to this discernment the priesthood. Many people are not aware of the enormous collective work needed and required in preparation for the men to the priesthood. It takes the spiritual and financial assistance of dedicated men and women like you to be able to make this work be accomplished in the vineyard of the Lord. We are greatly, greatly thankful for your prayers, for your counsel, and for the many ways that you support and encourage the work here at the seminary. We began this year with a new foundational program of priestly formation called the Propodeutic Stage, now required at the beginning of seminary life, and we are excited to welcome 20 men in this Propodeutic program here at the seminary. Eight different dioceses across the nation have entrusted us in this work of raising good shepherds for the church here at Holy Trinity Seminary. And we, who are in the formation team, are dedicated to the work of making sure that they are holy and wholesome men to serve as bridge to Christ for the people of God. And I am truly, truly blessed to share this ministry of priestly formation with very dedicated and competent priest faculty who I rely on as a team for the formation of these fine seminarians. And please allow me to introduce them to you. And I ask you to please hold your applause until I introduce them all. Serving as our new vice rector is Father Don Zeeler, who is a, an alumnus of Holy Trinity Seminary class of 1996. And serving as director of our new propodeutic stage formation is Father Paul Bechter, also HDS alumnus, class of 2011. And serving as associate director of formation and director of seminarians for the Diocese of Dallas is Father Zach Webb, who is actually the longest serving priest on faculty here at the seminary, even though he looks like the youngest one. And serving as the Associate Director of Formation is Father Ross Mower, who is in his second year on formation faculty. Serving as a Resident Spiritual Director for the Discipleship Stage is Father Eugene Azorji, who is in his fourth year of service to the seminary. And certainly, last but not least, Father Luke Turner, a Benedictine priest serving as the spiritual director for the Propodeutic Stage Men. Please join me to acknowledge these my brother priests and seminary faculty. <laughs> and working closely with these Priest faculty are also Dr. Matthew Walls, who is the Director of Intellectual Formation, and Mrs. Sarah Pinwell as Director of Pastor Formation and Admissions Coordinator, and Ms. Olga Wong as Director of Music, as you have seen this evening how she wonderfully directed our men. And also the members of our support staff who work night and day to support this priestly formation mission. 
I am so grateful, grateful to each of them for their dedication in this work that is so important in the life of the church. Now, dear friends, it is now my great honor to introduce to you the men whom this evening is all about, the Spes Gregis, the hope of the flock, seminarians of Holy Trinity Seminary, representing eight sponsoring dioceses. And I ask you also to hold your applause until the last diocese has been presented. For the Diocese of Jefferson City, we have three men. For the Diocese of Lafayette, four men. And for the Diocese of Laredo, we have one man. For the Diocese of Victoria in Texas, we have three men. And for the Diocese of Nashville, we have one man. For the Archdiocese of Galveston, Houston, we have 13 men. And for the Diocese of Austin, we have 21 men. And of course, our home diocese of Dallas, we have seven men. Please join me to acknowledge the 2023-2024 men of Holy Trinity Seminary. The Spirit of the Lord is truly at work in the sacred grounds and we know that also by the fruits. We are blessed this year with the opportunity to honor two of Holy Trinity Seminary alumni celebrating 50 years of their priestly ministry and life, Golden Jubilee. Their dedication and beautiful witness to the joys of the priesthood speaks volume about the importance of the mission of Holy Trinity Seminary and the need for us to support our seminarians so that God willing, day two, we'll be able to celebrate many years of fulfilling priestly ministry. The video you are about to watch is made in honor of our jubilarians. Well, uh, Don, you can explain it because you were the pioneer. You were here in September of 65. I came in oh, January you, you arrived of close enough. Yeah. So when I arrived here at the University of Dallas as a freshman, again, we attended class with university students, lay students. I think there were only 27, 28 of us uh, with Monsignor Pichard included in that first class at the university that we were freshmen, sophomores, and juniors. And it was a small group. We were all friends with each other. And it was just a splendid way to begin one's education, especially when you're 18 years old. And uh, Bishop Gorman's vision, I, I, I think, proved true. It, it was best for us to attend classes, not sequestered off by ourselves somewhere, but with the very people that we were going to serve, the very people who would collaborate with us in running uh, churches and running schools. So it was an unprecedented move on the part of Bishop Gorman, and it was the right move. And, and I, I'm still thankful for his vision, and it, uh, and it influenced me greatly even uh, on today. So really, I mean, that was part of the genius of my Bishop Gorman, was putting the seminary on campus so that the seminarians, you know, went to class with their peers and, uh, you know, had a lot of interactions with the, uh, the students on campus. When it was smallish and you all knew each other, and you knew the faculty, it, it was a, a, a wonderful family sort of experience, which I treasure. Yeah, and we had a chapel. The university sure chapel did. was very small back in those days, and we were very close to it. So we had masses there, and we had morning prayer and all that. Yeah, it was a family, a good community spirit. So we were the beneficiaries of people of vision 
primarily Bishop Gorman, but all these other people at the university, these other people at the first generation at the seminary, uh, they were highly intelligent and, and they knew how to educate students and seminarians and, and I benefited greatly from their wisdom. You know, we got here in 67 to this building and uh, so it was wonderful. We, it was a dream come true, you know, having our own building, uh, having all sorts of uh, athletic opportunities here that we didn't have up on the Indeed, we did. campus. I also really like the fact that because of the way when we were born, we got to experience the old church when the Masses was in Latin, in Tribor Altaria, Deum Qualitificat, Juventutum Meum. And we also got to understand the changes in the church uh, that started happening in, with the Second Vatican Council. We got to, to experience the old church and experience the new church. And that was such a blessing for me. In the next 50 years, for the seminary to do what's happened in the first 50 years, and that's to foster these relationships between the seminarians and the people they're going to serve and the people they're going to collaborate with. And if they can know each other from an early age, it benefits everybody, especially the, the people that we are called to serve. What stands out in my mind with Monsignor Zimmerman is his great generosity during his time as pastor at Christ the King Parish, uh, really helping other parishes, uh, St. Cecilia's in particular, you know, to uh, rebuild a church after it was hit by lightning. And, you know, he really was, you know, very generous in sharing the, the resources of Christ the King parishes with other places in the diocese that, uh, you know, really assisting the ministry of his brother priests. Let, let me brag on Monsignor Pichard, tell you things he won't tell you himself. He was always our best student, you know, which he never let us forget. <laughs> I, I was not, I was back in the pack, which he never let me forget. <laughs> <laughs> But what Larry was, was an example for the rest of us of what we were called to be, what we could do if we gave it the effort. And I think over the last 50 years, he, he has done the same thing. He, his effort and his skill has always been superb and always been an example, I think, for the rest of us to follow. You know, the, the image that always sticks in my mind with Monsignor Pichard, he learned it, he taught, I think he taught himself how to speak Spanish and seemed to have a special affection for that ministry. I remember on his 25th anniversary, you know, up singing songs at the mariachis. The Holy Trinity opened me up to uh, have confidence in myself and uh, to desire, as Pope Francis calls us priests, having the smell of the sh sheep on our hands. It's great to have the opportunity to honor you on the 50th anniversary of your priestly ordination. I'm grateful for the priestly formation that you received at Holy Trinity Seminary. I'm grateful to have shared that with you, and I just wish you the best um, as you continue to minister among the people of the Diocese of Dallas in your retirement. I would like to ask our jubilarians, HDS class of 1973, Monsignor Don Zimmerman and Monsignor Larry Pichard, to please stand in your tables. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please join me to congratulate the two. Thank you so much. Thank you, Monsignors, for being a bridge to Christ for so many souls that you have served for several years and for being an example and a role model for many of us, the young priests, and certainly for our seminarians. Now, friends, it takes a lot to make a good seminary, and the success of every diocesan seminary reflects the kind of support and the guidance that it receives from the local bishop. Holy Trinity Seminary is truly blessed to have a bishop who has made it a priority in his ministry and has made that abundantly clear, both in word and in deed. The seminary, which is at the center of the life of the diocese, 
And as rector, I am truly blessed and grateful for the unwavering support that I received from our local bishop, Bishop Burns. Please join me to welcome to the podium Most Reverend Edward J. Burns, who will say a few remarks and also bless our meals. Bishop Burns. Father Vincent Anyama, thank you very much for the introduction. Thank you for your kind words. And thank you for the recognition that, of course, the bishop has a significant responsibility for a seminary. And it's also the responsibility of the bishop to assign a good man as a rector of the seminary. My friends, please jo join me in thanking Father Vincent Anyama for all the wonderful work he does here at Holy Trinity Seminary. In a special way, we also want to welcome back one of our alumni to this special evening, Father Bishop Francis Malone. Bishop Malone, thank you so much for joining us and knowing that you've lived here for over nine years uh, here at Holy Trinity Seminary. It's an opportunity for us to say welcome home and welcome back. We're so glad to have you with us. I'm also grateful to our Honorary chairs for this event, Dorothy and John O'Dwyer, thank you for everything that you do and the support. It's wonderful to welcome you and your family members here this evening. To all of you who are the supporters of Holy Trinity Seminary, you are a blessing to us. As you heard Father Vincent indicate that this is sacred grounds, when we saw the men standing here before us, we are mindful of the fact that their vocation is a gift from God, that each of those men were called by name from their mother's womb to fulfill what God has in store for them. The fact that this seminary and the word seminary comes from the Latin seminarium, which means a seedbed. It's here that these vocations will continue to grow. And it's here that these men will be nurtured and nourished in a way so as to grow into the men that God has created them to be and in following his will. As you heard on the video, Bishop Gorman was so insightful. As the eighth bishop of the Diocese of Dallas, I am grateful for what my predecessors have done. And in that, grateful for Bishop Gorman in establishing the University of Dallas and this Holy Trinity Seminary. It takes a lot of work and a lot of effort, and it is worth it. And with all of you who are here, I want to thank you for your participation in God's divine plan that these men who have been called from their mother's womb are stepping forward courageously answering a priestly vocation to be sent out into the world so as to save a million souls. We are grateful for this seminary. Holy Trinity Seminary, was an eight-year seminary program from its inception in 1965 until 1986, providing both collegiate and theological formation and education for seminaries. What we see now, it is involved in a collegiate, pre-theology, and a propedeutic program. The church evolves in many different ways, but the very truth of a priestly vocation is that we're training these men to be men of word and sacrament. Throughout its history, Holy Trinity Seminary has been blessed to prepare men for the priesthood in more than 40 dioceses and archdioceses in 18 states across this country, serving millions upon millions of Catholics. 
That is the impact of Holy Trinity Seminary. My friends, thank you for your participation. Thank you for your kindness, your support, your generosity in assisting us in the good work of priestly formation. And so let us now ask God's blessing upon us this evening and our food. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Heavenly Father, gracious God, look kindly upon all those gathered here tonight. Bishop Malone, our jubilarians, faculty, staff, seminarians, benefactors, and guests, acknowledging our participation in the formation of men for the priesthood. We give you thanks and praise, Almighty God, for gracing us with these men whose lives of faithful leadership will be given in ministry and service to your holy people. Bless our apostolic community and all those who lead and form them. Bless the families who generously nurture vocations to the priesthood and all those who support our seminarians with prayer. We ask that you bless our time together this evening, the food we are about to share, and above all, gracious Father, let this time together enrich the lives of our seminarians and engender within them us all a deepened love for you, our good shepherd. Bless us, O Lord, and these thy gifts which we are about to receive from thy bounty through Christ our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you, Bishop Burns. And you may now uh, enjoy your meal as we prepare to begin uh, the program for tonight after our meal. Uh, please continue to enjoy your dessert and your coffee after your meal. And I want to begin our program this evening uh, first of all, I um, wanted to acknowledge a few individuals who are here. Uh, first, we are blessed, as Bishop Burns uh, mentioned, to have our keynote speaker, Bishop Francis Malone, the Bishop of Shreveport. So we look forward to hearing uh, from him on his reflections shortly. We're also blessed to have with us the Auxiliary Bishop of Dallas, Bishop Greg Kelly, who keeps a close eye on me as a resident bishop here at Holy Trinity Seminary. A very warm greetings also to all the HDS alumni who have returned to support their alma mater tonight. Welcome to each and every one of you. And last but not least, a special welcome and gratitude to the families, the families of our seminarians who are here in great number. Thank you so much for the gift of your sons. Thank you. And now please allow me to introduce the honorary chairs of tonight's event. Dorothy and John O'Dwyer, originally Chicago area natives, moved to Plano in 1983 and had been members of St. Elizabeth and Seton Parish for over 40 years, with brief breaks to live in Germany and in China. They are the parents of four and grandparents of nine. I'm glad to have their family members also here with us tonight. Dorothy and John understand the indispensable value of supporting the seminarians in priestly formation. They've spoken to me a number of times about the shortage of priests across the nation and the joy of seeing young seminarians stepping up to discern the priesthood. They are very fond of Holy Trinity Seminary and they have been a long time generous but quiet supporters of the seminary for several years. I mean, in addition to their love and their dedication to the seminary, one of their joys come from their humble ministry to the poor, especially through the involvement in Catholic Charities and CPLC and their passionate ministry at a local maternity home 
for homeless pregnant women, the Bella House, where John is currently serving as the chair. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me to welcome to the podium our honorary chairs for tonight, Dorothy and John O'Dwyer. Thank you very much. Uh, Dorothy and I are honored and privileged to serve as the honorary chairs this evening for this fundraising event. Uh, thank you, Father Vincent, and your staff for allowing us to have this opportunity. As I was preparing for this evening, I was thinking about my interactions with seminaries over the course of my life. And we've had lots of them. Um, Got to keep it short, so I'll only share a couple. Uh, a positive, uh, Dorothy's uncle, Father Jack O'Shea, spent 50 years plus after being ordained at Mundelein Seminary in Chicago. Her brother, Tom, her older brother, entered the seminary in high school, and we're pretty sure that he had the shortest tenure of any seminarian in the world, <laughs> and they advised him to find another vocation. When, when I was in seventh grade, we were very close to the uh, uh, parish in Batavia, Illinois, and they used to have dinners for young men who thought they might have a vocation. Uh, Monsignor Donovan would call my mom and say, this is a diocesan event, I need to bring some young people, can John come? I'd say to my mom, I thought you guys wanted me to be a doctor. She goes, yes, just go shut up and have a nice uh, Italian dinner. <laughs> so, but we, then I started, we started thinking about our interactions with Holy Trinity, Trinity Seminary. What a wonderful place. Uh, we cannot point to an individual event that triggered our involvement with the seminary. We think it was probably either part of a bishop's appeal or fundraising for the building of this, uh, this facility. But I stepped back and thought about what is special about Holy Trinity Seminary, and four things jumped out. We have a wonderful physical plant here. Uh, this building is a tremendous addition. Some of the old timers here may remember the dungeon under the uh, dorm that was the fitness center and laundry room and things like that. This is a tremendous upgrade. We've, uh, we've upgraded all the dorms uh, over the last few years, and we recently uh, created the propedeutic uh, um, uh, space for the new program. So wonderful physical facility, but the facility is not the key to this organization. There are three keys to Holy Trinity Seminary. Tr Trinity Seminary. First of all is the leadership, and that leadership comes from Bishop Burns, uh, Bishop Kelly and the seven bishops from the other dioceses that entrust their seminarians to this facility. And we'd like to thank them for the leadership that they uh, offer here today. Secondly is the staff of Holy Trinity Seminary. Father Vincent is a wonderful person. We've gotten to know him and, and are tremendously impressed with him. The staff here in working with the seminarians is tremendous the administrators, the teachers, the priests, uh, we owe them a debt of gratitude. And finally, the reason we're here tonight is the seminarians. 63 young men are here considering their uh, potential vocation to the priesthood, either discerning it or following uh, their vocation. And without them, we wouldn't have the future shepherds of the Catholic Church. Uh, I'd encourage you tonight to spend time talking to these young men encourage them in their vocation, and pray for them that they're successful. And finally, the reason we're really here tonight, as everybody knows, is money. Uh, I was gonna say something separately, but the uh, website captured it pretty well. We're trying to raise $550,000 tonight, and if we do, there is an anonymous match 
that will throw in another 100000 So we can raise over $650,000 tonight if, if the people in this room can dig deep uh, and be generous in supporting the seminary. The money, as described on the website, uh, goes to this, and it's better worded than I could, so that's why I'm going to read it. This money provides the seminarians with a robust formation program, allowing them to joyfully pursue their discernment journeys. Uh, that's worth investing in. And I would ask you tonight to truthfully consider what you can do to contribute to help these young men uh, pursue their di di discernment journeys. So thank you very much. We're honored to be here tonight and uh, hope everybody will dig in and, and finance this uh, activities again tonight. Thank you. Thank you so much, John and Dorothy, for those words and your commitment to the seminary. It is truly a joy uh, to have you with us. I do want to take a moment to say how grateful we are uh, to the many individuals and families, organizations, religious communities, and institutions and parishes, groups that have done so much and continue to do so much to support us. Your generosity makes it possible for us to do this work that we do here. And now the moments that we have been all waiting for. It is my joy and honor to introduce tonight's keynote speaker, an alumnus of Holy Trinity Seminary who received his seminary formation here at Holy Trinity Seminary from 1969 to 1977. He returned as a vice rector and served as well at the seminary. Ordained for the Diocese of Little Rock with a BA in history and uh, an MA in education from the University of Dallas. Monsignor then Malone from the university, uh, received a licentiate in canon law from the Catholic University of America in Washington, D.C. He has done tremendous work, quite exceptional, in promoting vocations as a pastor. He was called to the Order of Bishop on November 19, 2019, for service in the North Louisiana. And on January 28, 2020, he was ordained and installed as the third bishop of the Diocese of Shreveport. Among his peers in seminary formation here at HDS, he is fondly remembered for his famous last minute field goal to win the intramural championship, <laughs> about which I am sure he will be happy to share with whomever desires to know more details. Ladies and gentlemen, Please join me to welcome back to HDS, the Most Reverend Francis Malone. Tomorrow, I will preside at the Sunday Eucharist here at Holy Trinity Seminary. I will look into the faces of young men sitting where I once sat 46 years ago, and I will tell them that this place, which I called my home for eight years as a seminarian, one year as vice rector, is a welcomed place to be. Seminarians do not usually think in those terms. The seminary and the seminary experience is not designed to become a stable place in which to live, but rather 
a stopping off place, moving us, carrying us, forming us, molding us, directing us through the years of academia and intellectual formation towards an end that we hope will arrive quickly. And though the years do pass with an unpredictable speed, culminating in graduation and hopefully one day ordination, few look back and say, I wish I could do that all over again. <laughs> Perhaps it is because when we were here as students in formation, we could not wait for it to be over, or because we had developed a hunger for ordained ministry that cultivated in us an impatience for it to be complete. In retrospect, the journey from high school to ordination enabled us to travel the bridge, to use the metaphor to this reflection tonight, a bridge that spanned one form of youthful life to entering into the precipice of a life dedicated to serving the Lord. If there is one question I've been asked over the years, it would have been something like this. Why did you become a priest? For those who knew me then, they might have asked, how did you ever become a priest? <laughs> the answers to these two questions are easy. The why. I was born and reared in Philadelphia. One of nine children, I attended the Church of the Nativity of the Blessed Virgin Mary there, taught by the Sisters of St. Joseph of Chestnut Hill. And from a very young age, I fell in love with the Mass. I celebrated my first Mass in my bedroom when I was in the third grade. <laughs> Sometimes by myself, Sometimes my younger sisters served. I think I was ahead of the time. <laughs> I molded pieces of bread out of, out of small, into small hosts. I made good use of Welch's grape juice for the wine. And I fashioned vestments out of sheets and towels. And because I was an observant little boy, I knew how to hold my hands, and the St. Joseph Missal allowed me to read the Latin text as I did so. Why? Well, soon into my life came Father Corrigan, who taught me the correct pronunciation of the Latin, the Latin that we would use when I began to serve Mass for real. He took a liking to me. He encouraged me to be faithful to my serving assignments. He was the model priest for me, for my youth. He was the priest who came to my home when I was 12 to anoint my mother who had died suddenly only three weeks after giving birth to my brother. He was the one who saw to it that I was in the sanctuary for the special and big ceremonies. Following him were Father William McDonough, Father James Vizard, Father Paul Corrigan, Father Paul Curran, and my pastor, Father John Nugent, who remained my pastor for 19 years and who preached at my first Mass of Thanksgiving. These were exceptional men, and though all of them have made their way from this life to the next, I can attest that none of them has ever been accused of misbehaving nor the cause of scandal. Why? There was another priest in my life. He was my father's younger brother, Bernard, ordained three months before I was born. He was a constant in my life, but he lived in Arkansas, and I rarely saw him except when he came home in the summer for vacation. Nevertheless, because he saw in me a vocation, he invited me to, to join him in Arkansas live with him for my senior year of high school, and from that environment, he encouraged me to enter the seminary for the Diocese of Little Rock. And while he lived an exemplary life as a priest, the foundation, I'll emphasize the foundation to my vocation 
was in those priests who nurtured me back home in Philadelphia. They were present when I needed a priest in my life the most and with or without knowing it, formed my vocation. My uncle was my hero from a distance. And once I was ordained to the priesthood in 1977, he became my brother priest in Arkansas until he died in 2017. 67 years a priest, 91 years of age. His seminary years introduced him to others of his time as a seminarian from Dallas and Fort Worth. Priests with the names like Vogel and Cooney and McTammany and Thomas and Erbrick. And because they were his friends, as I grew up and entered Holy Trinity Seminary, they became my friends too. I discovered that while my life was filled with the mentoring priest of my youth in Philadelphia, I experienced the value of priest friends, some with whom I journeyed. I did not understand nor appreciate the discipline of seminary life, nor the restrictions of living here, but I accepted it as I look back and count myself blessed to have crossed that bridge to Christ accompanied by priests with whom you may be familiar. I start appropriately with names like Zimmerman and Bichard. I'm gonna stop there for just a second, Don and, and Larry. Um, I had many mentors in my life, the priest back home in Philadelphia, my uncle. But you being four years my senior, were also men who mentored me too. You supported me. You became my friends. And even though, Don, I could kick a football farther than you, <clears throat> you never held that against me. 44 yards. 44 yards. Other names. Cloherty, Pondent, Petter, Mosio, Beershank, Labone, Bell, what a wonderful priest, John Bell, Monaghan, Bruce Bradley, who I think is just a, an exemplar priest, Pemberton in Fort Worth, and many others whose names escape me, but never lost in the memories of experience as we crossed the bridge together. I would be remiss if I did not also mention those who connected with me in another way here, with me sometimes kicking and screaming into compliance. Monsignor Hughes, Monsignor Daly, Monsignor Ferliti, Father Moran. For those who are here, you'd never forget Father Moran. Monsignor Sheehan. The simple answer to why is that God had placed these priestly men, all of them in my life, because seminarians need other seminarians to journey with just as priests need other priests, and as I have found, bishops need other bishops. With names like my classmates, Duca, Desitel, wonderful bishops like Father Bishop Mark Seitz, and Curver, and Olson, and Flores, and a bishop that I think exemplifies what it means to be a bishop in this time by his simplicity and his love, Bishop Kelly. <clears throat> Companions on the journey, some would say, and how could we ever cross the bridge to Christ without them in our lives? When I was rector of the Cathedral of St. Andrew in Little Rock, there were five priests who lived there in retirement. And I remember one of them who, with a very personal conversation with me about his life, he lamented and questioned that he thought his life as a priest was not as effective as one might hope. When in fact, 
he had lived a very fruitful and fulfilling life as a priest. And it is not an exaggeration that all the priests that I have mentioned here, that they, they have touched your lives. They have touched your lives, lived very fruitful lives, and enabled you, enabled you in one way or another to journey over life's bridge to a lasting encounter with Jesus Christ. And it is important to be specific that such priests, that they were there for you in critical times of your life, not just sacramentally, but in a way so profound that you might wonder where you would be today had God not allowed you and them to cross paths. Imperfect as we priests are, God uses the sacred priesthood to do what few others can do, and we are the recipients of such graces. So when someone like me, certainly not a paradigm of the perfect priest, stands before you and utters a litany of names of priests who have touched your lives, please be aware that for many of us, it began right here, or was nurtured here, or reached its destiny from here. And your support of them, whether financial or spiritual, brings about instruments of grace for those entrusted to their care. And confident that you came here prepared to offer financial assistance to the cause, I ask you to look at what you had planned to pledge. Uh, I'm not a plant up here, I'm a realist. But I want you to look at what you planned to pledge. I want you to tear it up. And I want you to double the amount. <laughs> because your sacrifice in priestly formation will bear dividends in an investment that is just beyond imagining. As one of my former <clears throat> bishops once reminded me, he said, remember, you will never outdo God in his generosity. You will never outdo him in being generous. Tonight should be your opportunity to try to match his love for you and your priests. I've often toyed with the idea of writing a few books about my life as a priest, not about me or what I did, but how the Lord brought into my life souls for the caring, from birth to death, and through these hands. If you're a priest, and I, because I can't see, I just see the lights. If you're a priest in this room this evening, would you please stand? And, and as you stand, and as you stand, I want you just to hold your hands like this if you would. And I want everyone to look at these hands, these sacred hands. They helped span the bridge of those we love sending them on their way to the Lord. Fathers, brother bishops, we thank you for your, for your lives. We thank you for these hands that have done what most people cannot do. And we, and we thank you from the bottom of our hearts. God only knows that those who live here now as seminarians and those who follow them, God only knows the future of their minds and their hands as they become altar Christi. To the second question of how did you ever become a priest, the answer rests in the grace of Christ, inviting me to a deeper union with him and the conviction that there was only, for me, only one path to him in this life. I received this from where I came, from my parents, my parish priest, my brother seminarians, and later brother priest, 
from the people entrusted to my care these 46 years and from good souls, good souls, just like you. What you do this evening, just by being here, just by being here and by your generous response to the priest in your life is grace to the young men who now call this place home. For a time, as they experience the power of the bridge to Christ. I am so honored to be asked to be with you this evening and I am humbled to offer the holy sacrifice to the mass here tomorrow because I know that you would not be here without possessing a profound love of the priesthood. May the Lord continue to make the most of your love for him and for those who continue to walk the bridge to Christ. May we one day call them Father. God bless you all. Thank you so much, Bishop Malone, for those very inspiring and really uplifting words, and thank you for your priesthood and for being here at HDS. As I said earlier, our task here at Holy Trinity Seminary is to, to raise holy and wholesome priests to serve as a bridge to Christ people of, for the people of God. And it's about producing the kind of priests that you desire, that you deserve, priests with emotional, mature human hearts, priests able to lead others to the heart of Jesus, priests who are men of communion, priests who, are, who really specializes in the knowledge of the human heart, priests who are able to preach not only with their heads, but also with their own hearts. To give you a glimpse of how HDS is preparing our men to become a bridge to Christ for you, the people of God, we have a special video for you tonight. And I would like to invite Mr. John Ungarino, chair of the Seminary Advancement Team, to come up to the podium to introduce the video. Thank you, Father. As Father Onyama mentioned, this year we've put together a video that highlights tonight's theme, which is a bridge to Christ, um, by giving you all a glimpse into our human formation here at the seminary. Um, human formation is the particular element of our formation that, is, that serves as the first step in our becoming a bridge to Christ in our seminary life. Um, it's an, often an overlooked dimension of formation. Um, but I hope that this video and all of your interactions with us tonight um, can show you just how important human formation is in the life of the seminarian as uh, we are formed to become bridges to Christ. And it is in this way that we receive the love and support that you all give so generously and build upon it in order to one day give that same Christ-like love as priests. Um, before showing the video, I want to take a moment to recognize and thank my brother seminarian Ryan both for uh, for his incredible time, effort, and talent in putting together this video and, and, and uh, filming it and making it. Um, although Ryan's regular responsibilities would not have ordinarily had him working on this video with me and the other members of the advancement team, um, knowing how talented he is with videography from our time at Baylor together, I made a special request to have him join us and film the whole video, edit the whole video, the whole nine yards. And so uh, thank you, Ryan, for that. Um, with that, please turn your attention to the screens for this year's uh, Spes Gregis video on becoming a bridge to Christ through human formation. St. John Vianney, the patron saint of parish priests, is famous for describing the priesthood as the love of the heart of Jesus. At Holy Trinity Seminary, our goal is to grow into that love. But if that's our goal, what are we doing flipping burgers? When we think of what our priests do, a lot can come to mind. Priests give us the Eucharist, they hear our confessions, 
They baptize your kids. They write edifying homilies. They pray. They take care of your loved ones as they approach death. They take care of the church. And all of that, believe it or not, begins with human formation. The heart of human formation here at Holy Trinity Seminary is forming men to be bridges to Christ, to help them grow in self-awareness, form healthy habits, and build strong moral character that they might become places of encounter with Christ, a bridge from God to man and man to God. And human formation is the foundation of priestly formation, but why? Well, how can you develop your spiritual life if you can't get out of bed in the morning? How can you cultivate your intellect if you can't stay away from your phone for more than an hour? How can you be a bridge to Christ if you haven't showered in over a week? St. John Paul II said that following the example of Jesus, who knew what was in humanity, the priest should be able to know the depths of the human heart. This allows the priest to become, as St. Paul says, all things to all people. The first step in a seminarian's human formation is growth in self-knowledge. In this first step, we ask the question, what materials am I working with as I strive to become a bridge to Christ? As we start answering this question, we begin to understand certain aspects of our upbringing that have contributed to making us the men we are today. We also take a deeper look at our own particular strengths and weaknesses. But through prayer, formation, and fraternity, those potential barriers can be transformed by God's grace into cornerstones of the bridges we hope to become. Our men, they come here to learn over time all these human qualities. They take formation classes, they partake in workshops, uh, they hear conferences, that really delves deeply into these themes of these human qualities. They certainly learn uh, to be well-rounded gentlemen in the context of, of their community life, in the context of their horarium, like their daily schedule, uh, in the context of conversations that they have with some of their classmates up at the University of Dallas, uh, through their regimen of exercise, uh, they learn a lot through their hiking expedition uh, during the summer. Once we've opened ourselves up to hearing the voice of God through self-knowledge, we are ready for the second part of human formation, self-possession. In the propedeutic year, we're entering into a technology fast. So whenever I started this fast, I had a lot of confidence, but I realized that like, I was, a, I was really addicted to my phone. But after that stage of realizing that I was addicted, it made me think of the catechism where it says, our distractions reveal our attachments. So I think the biggest fruit is in prayer. So in the chapel, whenever I don't have my phone with me, I don't have this, that distraction. And that really frees me to raise my mind to God. Another fruit with the technology fast is really being able to truly enter into friendship with the other seminarian brothers. So back at home, it was a big temptation to just pull out our phones whenever I'm with a big group of friends, and we would really get sucked into that. But here with the technology fast, we're truly able to enter into just a bonding experience with all your friends and just have a good time. Human formation isn't just about helping the seminarian to suffer through the human challenges we face every day. Instead, through self-possession, we build habits that allow us to thrive in the world in order to become the best bridges we can be. We're no longer setting aside senseless computer games and junk food simply because we're told to, but truly because we love Jesus Christ and want nothing less than to bring others to that same love. At the same time, through growth and self-possession, we're learning to receive not only to receive the endless stream of grace directly from God, but also the many blessings He brings to us through those around us. In learning to receive, we begin to realize the incredible ways we are being blessed every day, and we develop the ever-important virtue of gratitude. With this gratitude, we take the offerings of God's people 
and we offer them back to the Lord in every aspect of our seminary life, but especially in our communal liturgy. This growth in receptivity is also aimed toward receiving all that the Church has to teach us in her endless beauty and wisdom, in the prayers, in music, in the Mass. But a pursuit of holiness doesn't stay in the chapel. All right, boys, here we go. Take a butter from the top. Working out, playing sports, and receiving personal training are ways in which we take care of the bridge. They shape us into bridges to Christ, points of connection between the world in which we live and the world to which we're heading. And by playing guitar by the fire pit together, reading poetry with friends, and cooking meals for one another, we give the bridge character, making it welcoming and accessible. With this in mind, these activities are no longer just about having fun, but rather they become true training grounds and expressions of our human integrity. The need for the gospel becomes increasingly apparent each day. The task ahead can seem overwhelming, even impossible. But once we've embraced self-knowledge and self-possession, the Lord gives us the strength for the last step of human formation, self-gift. With barriers removed and stones in place, we are prepared for a life of service. We're already being prepared to share this goodness through our interactions with students at the University of Dallas and in our pastoral assignments, where we engage in ministry every week. Here at Holy Trinity Seminary, we take very seriously uh, good health and physical fitness, partly because I, for one, know that the daily life of the diocesan priests uh, can be very demanded. And the quality of our mental and physical health has a direct impact in the quality of the service that we can offer to the people. As a newly ordained priest, I was privileged to, to serve um, under the tutelage of Monsignor Larry Pichard, who is one of our jubilarians today. And one of the things I learned from him that I'm very grateful for is the importance of maintaining a daily regimen of physical exercise and it is a joy to celebrate with him this day and I'm here as rector to hopefully pass on to these young men the same discipline that I have learned from my mentors. Archbishop Fulton Sheen writes, in order to become our priest Christ assumed our human nature. We likewise continue his priesthood not only by having contact with him in heaven but also by remaining human and speaking to him in the name of all humanity. Vertically, we are related to Christ in heaven. Horizontally, we are related to men on earth. This is the goal of human formation at Holy Trinity Seminary. And that's why we flip burgers. The grace God gives us through human formation doesn't erase our personalities. It makes us into truer versions of who we are meant to be into images of Christ, the fountainhead of the entire priesthood. As we can see from this wonderful video, everything we do here at HDS is formational, and, and they demand financing. Your generous gifts tonight make that possible, and I can assure you that your financial gifts tonight is not about anything else but 
directly for the formation of these men that you're sitting with to become fitting bridge to Christ. Now that you know what you're being asked to support and how exciting it is uh, to be a part of such a crucial endeavor in the life of the church, it's time for our live auction. Tonight we are so blessed to have an auctioneer who is also a parent of one of our seminarians. From the Diocese of Victoria in Texas, Mr. Freeman Pettis, otherwise known to the seminarians as William's dad. <laughs> Friends, please join me to welcome Mr. Pettis to the podium. Good evening, everybody. Tonight we are auctioning off a cooked meal from a renowned chef, and then you will be enjoying your meal with Monsignor Zimmerman, Monsignor Pritchard, Bishop Kelly, and Father Vincent. And tonight we would like to raise as much money as we possibly can on this one auction right here. One live auction item. All right. On this side for the mill, if anybody who do start off at five thousand. Five thousand one time now five thousand dollar bill who do one time now five thousand. Five thousand in the back. Thank you five now ten. Ten thousand one time now ten thousand dollar bill. Who to go one time now ten thousand dollar bill. Ten thousand dollar bill buys it out who to get it yet to get a one time now ten thousand dollar bill. Ten thousand how about seven thousand five hundred? Thank you seventy five hundred now ten thousand in the back. You're out in the back sir one time now ten thousand dollar bill. Thank you ten now twelve fifty. Twelve fifty now fifteen. Fifteen thousand in the back. Who to get out of one time now fifteen thousand dollar bill. Fifteen thousand dollar bill buys it all. Who to go to one time now fifteen fifteen make it a fifteen bit of fifteen thousand. Fifteen thousand dollar bill. Thank you fifteen now seventeen fifty. Seventeen fifty now twenty. Twenty thousand one time now twenty thousand dollar bill. Who to buy one time now twenty thousand dollar Bill, make it a twenty bit of twenty. Who don't want them not twenty thousand dollar bill? Twenty thousand. Hey, dear, 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 you want them not twenty? Make it twenty bit of twenty. Want them not twenty thousand dollar bill? Twenty thousand dollar bill. Thank you. Twenty. Twenty-two fifty now. Twenty-five now. How about twenty-seven and a half now? Thirty. Thirty one time not thirty. Who do you get? Who do you want them not thirty thousand? Thirty thousand dollar. Who do you get? Who want them not thirty thousand dollar bill? Make it a thirty bit of thirty. Want them not thirty thousand? Thirty thousand dollar bill. You ready for the video? Thirty thousand dollar bill. I've got the money right here at thirty thousand. We're going to pause for a moment. We're going to show one more video. So you were a uh, state champion in what field of running? Hurdles. Hurdles, okay. And um, what, uh, what, it truly was state for the whole state? You were number one? For or? Catholic schools. I for was, Catholic uh, schools. Actually, I was, I was number, number two in the low hurdles. I was number five in the high hurdles. Okay. But I did win a first in the uh, mile relay. Okay. I knew you were fast. Because we played football and tennis and we played uh, volleyball and all those things. And so one day I decided to challenge you to a race. Uh-oh, what happened? Uh, well, we started out and you left me in the dust. You smoked <laughs> me. I couldn't believe it that you could run that fast. <laughs> so I had to shut up after that. I think you could beat me now. Uh, <laughs> you leave me in the dust. I think I could. <laughs> you don't have to agree so readily. <laughs> That's just a little bit of the entertainment that you're going to have that night. <laughs> I recognize 30,000. Now, how about 3250? 3250, one time, not 32,500, one time, not 3200, to get it, 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 to get Thank you so much, Mr. Pettis. That was wonderful. <laughs> I can't talk like that fast anyway, so uh, this is great. Friends, <clears throat> earlier this evening, 
talked about uh, the celebration of the space grid is the hope of the flock, and these men who have answered the call to discern a vocation to the priesthood. This venerable Fulton Sheen often reminded his flock, and he said, the priest is not his own. He's not his own, but for you, his flock. If these men are ordained priests, they will be putting themselves second and laying down their lives in service to you. For you, for the sanctification of souls, and for the glory of God, our church needs good holy men, and we ask you to help us to provide the best possible formation for them so that one day they can be priests for you. Now, we've been challenged this year, as I mentioned earlier, to a new propedeutic stage program within a short time, and with your help tonight, we're able to absorb some of the costs of that program, that thus we can be able to say that we rose to the challenge. We're never afraid of responding to any kind of challenge necessary for continued advancement of priestly formation. And speaking of a challenge, this year, as already been mentioned, we are blessed with a challenge gift of $100,000 if we reach our goal by tonight. I'm truly grateful once again to many of you who have already given to help us try to meet this challenge, but we still need to meet our goal. Right now, we are just shy of, of our goal. Uh, last I heard, uh, we're currently at uh, 492,000. So I now ask you to reflect on the sacrifices that these seminarians are willing to make for you, for your children, for your grandchildren, for your families, as you consider what sacrifice that you are willing to make in return. Show them through support what a blessing that they are and how grateful you are for them that they answered God's call to discern the priesthood. At each table, you will find pledge cards and pens. If you would like to make an investment in these men, the future of our church, you may do so by one of several ways. To donate by credit card, simply open the camera on your smartphone and scan a QR code and the pledge card, and you will be directed to give uh, to a given link on our website. The seminarian also can assist you with this if needed. If you would like to donate via cash or check, simply place your gift in the pocket envelope and making sure to, to fill out the contact information at the bottom. You may also make a pledge this evening by checking the quote unquote, send me a pledge reminder. You check the box and fill out the contact information at the bottom. We will follow up with you in the coming weeks. Once the pledge card is complete, the seminarian will come to pick them up from your table. Once again, thank you so much in advance for your generosity and for partnering and participating with us in this holy work of formation. Remember, every gift counts and gets us closer to reaching our goal of raising 550000 and receive a challenge goal of of 100,000 for our formation. I'll give you a moment. As is our tradition as well at this benefit dinner tonight, we wish to acknowledge in a special way an amazing couple who are dedicated, very generous, supporters of Friends of the Seminary by bestowing on them the St. John Vianney Award, which is the highest honor the seminary gives in memory of our patron saint, the patron saint of parish priests. Ever since they discovered the gem of a place that the seminary is, Georgia and Mark Lyons, from my second assignment parish, All Saints, have poured out their time, their talents, their treasure into the work of Holy Trinity Seminary in very significant ways. And they have shown, without question, how much they love this place, their admiration that they have for the work of priestly formation. And here are some of the ways that they have supported the seminary. In 2019, both Georgia and Mark served as the honorary co-chairs for our SPES Graduates Benefit. And in numerous quiet ways, they have steadily helped us raise our benefit to new heights. 
In recent years, George and Mark, Georgia and Mark, has shown tremendous love for the seminary by sharing their personal gifts in service to our various needs. For instance, Mark has been serving as the chair of the Seminary Finance Committee, and as such, he's also in his second year of serving as a trustee of the Holy Trinity Seminary Governing Board. As if one of the lions was not enough to the seminary, Georgia is also in her second year of serving Holy Trinity Seminary's Advancement Development Committee. The Holy Trinity Seminary faculty and staff are truly blessed to have them as a people that we can always turn to for counsel and for their general support. And I thank them for their personal friendship. So, as an expression of our sincere gratitude, we present this award to them, which reads as follows. In recognition of and gratitude for their extraordinary giving from the heart, Holy Trinity Seminary bestows on Georgia and Mark Lyons the St. John Vianney Award, October 21, 2023. Followed by a quote from St. John Vianney, the priesthood is the love of the heart of Jesus. Georgia and Mark, congratulations and thank you. I was going to try to get by without saying anything, but Father Vincent said I had to. <laughs> uh, thank you, Bishop Burns, Bishop Kelly, for all you do for us. Bishop Malone, thank you very much for your most thoughtful comments. Enjoyed them. Thank you, Father Vincent, for all that you do to keep this place up and running. Uh, George and I are so blessed to have the opportunity to... Uh, just, we're just truly blessed to have the opportunity to participate in trying to support the seminary. And um, one, one final note, congratulations, Monsignor Zimmerman and Monsignor Pritchard on your wonderful accomplishment. 50 years is a long time um, to do anything. And uh, being a priest for 50 years has got to be quite the challenge. Wait, so, wait. But not as hard as being married for 51 years. <laughs> She said it, I didn't. <laughs> and to the seminarians, truly, you guys are the hope of the flock. We appreciate all you're doing. Um, just wish you the best of luck and God's blessing. And thank you again for this special honor. Appreciate it. George R. Mark, congratulations once again, and thank you. Please allow me to acknowledge so many other people who have made this evening possible. Certainly want to thank Mr. Pettis for sharing with us tonight uh, his much needed talent uh, in the auction. I do want to thank George Strong and his crew at Strong AV Productions at the back for our audiovisual needs. Thank you so much. It includes producing also some of the other things like the Jubilarian video and also filming tonight's event. I do want to thank Mitchell Junkman of Kendall Creative for designing of all our printed and online collateral and making sure that we also look good as a seminary. 
I do want to thank Monica Wilson and the staff of the Food Glorious Food Catering for preparing and serving our meal tonight in this event and for delivering uh, a well-executed plan. Thank you so much for such a delicious meal. I do want to acknowledge and thank Jen and Tom Schleem, who generously funded the construction of the space where this event, this event tonight is being held. Our seminary and advancement team, John Ungarino, Jeremy Casal, and Michael Snyder. Thank you for helping the faculty and the staff to plan every detail of this evening and providing us with your gifts. It has truly been an enjoyable experience and it is good to know how much you can work with your brother seminarians in providing such a wonderful evening. I do once again thank Ryan Boat, the seminarian that produced this video. I want to thank uh, Mr. Rich Kelly for receiving us in his, in his home for the rector's reception. Thank you to Dorothy and to John O'Dwyer, our honorary chairs, Bishop Malone, thank you so much once again, and to our jubilarians, Monsignor Pichard and Zimmerman, thank you. I do want to thank Audrey and Dan Tinkers for getting us going tonight with the challenge gift. And last but not least, please, join me to thank someone without whom we could not put this event together. Sylvia Nahara, our Director of Advancement. She always does a wonderful job. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sylvia, especially for the love that you've shown to, you've shown to these seminarians. You, she really, truly loves them. Thank you for the many ways that you have supported this important work of pre formation. Now, if your birthday is close to the ordination date of our jubilarians, which is Cinco de Mayo, May 5th, you may take the flowers at your table home. <laughs> at this moment, I would like to invite Bishop Greg Kelly to lead us in closing prayer. Bishop Kelly. As Father Vincent mentioned earlier in his remarks, and I live here at Holy Trinity Seminary, I think I'm the longest resident, and I do keep a c close eye on what he does, and am consistently and always um, impressed with the way he runs the seminary, with the, uh, his interaction with the young men, the staff. He really is a father to the seminarians here. So thank you very much, Father Vincent, for your ministry here as the rector of Holy Trinity Seminary. Also, I had a word of congratulations to Monsignor Zimmerman, Monsignor Pichard, on the celebration of the 50th anniversary. And I overlapped one year with uh, Monsignor uh, um, Bishop Malone. Um, my first year in the seminary in 1976 was his last, and he was finishing a, a marathon assignment doing uh, dishes every day. I, you, you can, he can tell you more about that in the, his own, I'm, I'm just supposed to pray. <laughs> so let us pray. Lord God, we thank you. We thank you for those whom you have sent ahead of us to, to prepare the way for us. None of us got here on our own. We thank you for the generations of our parents and grandparents who laid the foundation for our lives, for our faith, through whom you gave us the gift of life, through whom you gave us the gift of faith. We thank you for the generations that founded this place, Holy Trinity Seminary and the University of Dallas, for their wisdom and perseverance um, their generosity and courage. We thank you for the 50 years uh, Monsignor Pichard and Monsignor Zimmerman have served as priests in this diocese for the many ways in which they have drawn so many to the heart of your son. I pray also for this present generation, uh, the men being in formation now, that you may strengthen them, that you may keep their hearts open to whatever you ask of them, and that you may keep our hearts open to whatever you ask of us that we may show forth the same courage and perseverance and generosity to those who went before us. May we always do your will as good and faithful servants of your gifts and come one day to see you face to face, for that is, that is our destiny. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you, and thank you so much for your generosity and support for Holy Trinity Seminary.
Thank you, Bishop Kelly. I have a little bit of update. I was uh, just informed that we have surpassed our goal for tonight by $15,000. Thank you. Good. Thank you so much for being here and for wanting to be here. We now invite everyone to the student lounge upstairs to continue our fellowship with one another. The invitation is actually from the seminarians themselves. They usually have a community night and they invite you to the commu their community night, which is an extension of tonight. Um, the valet will be uh, here until 10 p.m. And with that, have a good night. God bless you. <laughs>